Welcome to episode 9 of Bird and Birds podcast series, Competitive Ed, the podcast, in which we dissect competition law issues to help you understand how they may affect your business. I'm Chiara Horgan, Competition Associate in our Rome office, and today we're diving into the intricate topic of information exchange in the realm of EU competition law. I will be speaking to Competition and Tech and Comms Senior Associate based in Rome, Lucia Antonazzi. Lucia, welcome. Thank you, Chiara. It's a pleasure to be here and discuss the new EU regime for horizontal agreements, specifically focusing on dealing with information exchange. So, Lucia, firstly, let's begin with a review and provide some background to today's topic for our listeners. As the EU horizontal agreements regime recently underwent significant changes, We're taking a closer look at how these changes impact information exchange between competitors and third parties. In June of this year, the European Commission introduced its revised horizontal block exemption regulations on research and development and specialization agreements. These updated regulations, accompanied by revised horizontal guidelines, took effect on 1st July 2023. They bring fresh clarity to the evaluation of horizontal cooperation agreements under EU competition rules. Lucia, could you provide our listeners with a brief overview of these changes? Certainly, Chiara. The revised regulation and guidelines serve as an essential update to the horizontal agreements regime. They provide much-needed clarity and model guidance when assessing the compatibility for cooperation agreements between competitors. Today, We'll delve into the specific chapter on information exchange, exploring the implication of these changes for businesses operating in the European market. Thank you, Lucia. So let's unpack this topic. As we know, information exchange has always been a delicate area in competition law. Could you enlighten us on the pro-competitive and anti-competitive effects of such exchanges? Absolutely, Chiara. Information exchange can have both positive and negative consequences. On the positive side, it's a common practice that can lead to efficiency gains, enhance market transparency and solve information asymmetry issues. However, when competitors exchange information on matters like current and future pricing, production capacities and commercial strategies, it can lead to anti-competitive behaviors, effectively garbing competition. The European Commission is particularly concerned about exchanges that enable undertakings to be aware of their competitors' market strategies, as this undermines the essence of market competition. According to the European Court of Justice case law, the exchanges of information between cartels participants clearly have an anti-competitive object in that they clearly run counter to the requirement of independence, which is a key feature of the market conduct of undertakings operating with a system of effective competition. Thank you for shedding light on the dual nature of information exchange, Lucia. Now, let's talk about the new horizontal guidelines. How have these guidelines evolved to address the changing landscape of information exchange? The revised horizontal guidelines emphasize the importance of a dynamic approach to information exchange, while acknowledging the efficiency gains and benefits it can bring to competitive markets, the Commission also underscored the potential for restriction of competition. Unlike other chapters, the guidelines don't offer predefined safe harbors for information exchange. These reflect the Commission understanding that the sensitivity of exchanged information is subjective and context dependent. Thus, companies must assess the nature of information, market characteristics and other factors on a case-by-case basis. It's interesting to see how the guidelines are evolving to provide a more nuanced view of information exchange. So, Lucia, what are some of the practical measures that the Commission recommends for companies dealing with information exchange? Chiara, the new guidelines offer practical advice to help companies navigate the complexities of information exchange. Firstly, 
Companies are encouraged to self-assess the new information sharing techniques, such as indirect disclosure, big data, and machine learning. The guidelines also outline potential pro-competitive effect for information exchange, although they must be relevant, specifically linked to the exchange of information, and significant enough to raise doubt about causing harm to competition. Secondly, the guideline institutionalizes the use of clean teams for information exchange between competitors. By clean team, the new horizontal guidelines mean a restricted group of individuals within an undertaking who are not involved in the undertaking's commercial operation and they are bound by strict confidentiality protocols with regard to the commercially sensitive information. While initially stemming from major practices, clean teams or independent third parties can help control information exchange in various contexts. Additionally, companies are advised to limit the exchange of information strictly to what's necessary for cooperation, restrict the scope of data sharing arrangement, and recommend the companies involve legal professional in sensitive meetings. These practical measures seem to provide companies with a roadmap to navigate the complexities of information exchange more effectively. Lucia, as we conclude our discussion, could you please share your final thoughts on this topic? Certainly, Chiara. Information exchange is a powerful tool that can bring efficiency and innovation to competitive markets. The revised guidelines acknowledge this while also emphasize the importance of avoiding anti-competitive behaviors. Companies should be careful when assessing the nature of exchange of information, its relevance, and potential impact on competition. With this practical measure in mind, companies can engage in informed information exchange practice while complying with EU antitrust rules. Thank you, Lucia, for your insightful perspective on this important aspect of competition law. Thank you, Chiara, for having me. It was a pleasure discussing the complexities of this new regime for horizontal agreements. That concludes episode 9 of Competitive Edge, the podcast. We hope you found the information valuable and as always, stay tuned for more insightful episodes. If you have any questions, we would love to hear from you. You can contact us by email at lucia.antanazzi at twobirds.com or chiara.horgan at twobirds.com. Also, if you'd like to stay up to date on competition and EU law developments in Europe and beyond, you can sign up to receive our monthly competitive ad newsletter. You will find a link in the notes of this podcast and on our homepage www.twobirds.com slash competition. Thank you for listening and we look forward to connecting with you in our next episode.